Hi, I'm Mitchell Anikas, a technical writer at DigitalOcean. In this screencast, I'll show you how to perform an initial server setup on an Ubuntu 14.04 cloud server. If you follow along, your server will be configured with the following. A new non-root user with super user privileges, remote root login disabled, public key authentication, and password authentication disabled. Before you get started, you must have root access to an Ubuntu server. Check out the link in the annotations or video description to learn how to quickly create an Ubuntu droplet on DigitalOcean. If you're not already connected to your Ubuntu server, go ahead and log in as the root user via SSH. First, find the IP address of your server and copy it to your clipboard. If you're using a DigitalOcean droplet, you can look this up at cloud.digitalocean.com. Next, open a terminal program, such as Terminal, iTerm2, or if you're using Windows, PuTTY. We'll open Terminal by using Spotlight. Press Command, Space, then type in Terminal. At the prompt, connect to the server as the root user by typing SSH root at, and then paste in the IP address of your server, then hit enter. Now supply the root password and hit enter. For security purposes, nothing will be displayed while you're typing in your password. Now that you're logged in as root, let's create a new user account. After you have chosen a username, type in add user, then the username. For our example, we'll use demo. Set the password for the new account and enter it again to confirm it. After this, you will be prompted for information about the user. You may fill this out if you wish, but we'll just leave everything blank. The last step is to confirm that everything is correct. Hit enter to confirm and complete the user account creation. Now that we have a new user account, let's grant it root privileges so we can use it to perform system administration tasks. On Ubuntu 14.04, do this by entering gpasswd minus a, the name of the user, and then the name of the group, sudo. Now our new user, demo, can run commands with root privileges by using sudo. Because we can use our new user account to run commands with root privileges, we can add a little bit of security to the server by configuring SSH to not accept remote root logins. Open the SSH configuration file in VI, a text editor, by entering the command displayed here. In this file, we must find the permit root login line. Search for this by typing in slash permit root followed by enter. Now move to the next word, yes, by typing the W key. Now replace yes by pressing C, then W, then type no, then hit escape. The line should say permit root login, one word, followed by no. Once you are done, save and exit the file by pressing colon X, then enter. To put the change you made into effect, restart the SSH service by typing service SSH restart. Now root login via SSH is disabled. From now on, you should log into your server as the new user that you created. Before closing your current terminal session, let's log into the server as the new user to test it out. Open a new terminal tab and type in SSH, then the name of the user, at symbol, and then paste in the IP address of the server, then hit enter. Supply the user's password to log in. Now let's test sudo. To use sudo, just add sudo before the command that you want to run with root privileges. For example, we can write a file to the root user's home directory by entering sudo touch slash root slash test. You will be prompted for the user's password to proceed. If you are returned to the prompt without any errors, this means that the command ran successfully. An optional but recommended step is to set up public key authentication for the new user. This will let you use an SSH key instead of a password to log into your server. Open a new terminal tab or window. This should open a new shell prompt on your local computer. Now type in ssh-keygen and hit enter. You will be prompted for the location to save your key pair. We'll leave it blank to accept the default. Now you will be prompted for a key passphrase. If you set a passphrase, it will be required whenever you use the private key for authentication. If you leave it blank, you'll be able to use the private key for passwordless authentication. In this demonstration, we'll leave it blank. This generates a private and public key in the .ssh directory of your local user's home directory. Remember that the private key should not be shared with anyone who should not have access to your servers. Now we must install the public SSH key on the remote server. Print the public SSH key by typing in the command displayed on the screen. Your public key will look something like this. Copy it to your clipboard, 
then switch to the terminal session that is connected as the user that you created earlier. Make a new .ssh directory by typing mkdir.ssh. Now restrict its permissions by entering chmod 700.ssh. Now type in vi.ssh slash authorized underscore keys to create and open the authorized key file with vi. Press I, then paste in the public key, then hit escape. Now save and exit the file by pressing colon X, then enter. Adding public keys to the authorized keys file enables corresponding private keys to be used for authentication instead of passwords. So now you can use the private key on your local computer as authentication when logging in as this user. Now type exit once to log out of your server, then attempt to reconnect to the server again. In most terminals, you can press the up arrow to pull up the last command that you ran. If you are logged in without being prompted for a password, the SSH key authentication worked. Remember that you need to have the private key to authenticate this way. Once you have SSH key authentication enabled, it is recommended that you disable password authentication for security purposes. Once you disable password authentication, you will be required to use SSH keys to log in. If you want to proceed, open the SSH configuration file in VI again. If you are prompted for a password, supply it now. Find the password authentication line. Search for this by typing slash password authentication followed by enter. The line is probably commented out with a pound symbol. To uncomment it, delete the pound symbol by pressing shift X once. Now move to the next word, yes, by pressing the W key. Now replace yes by pressing C, then W, then type no, then hit escape. The line should say, password authentication, one word, followed by no. Once you are done, save and exit the file by pressing colon X, then enter. To put the change into effect, restart SSH by typing sudo service SSH restart. Congrats, you just completed the initial server setup on an Ubuntu 14.04 cloud server. We hope you enjoyed the screencast. If you're looking to learn more about open source software and server administration, be sure to check out the DigitalOcean community for our extensive collection of tutorials at do.co community. See you next time.